Let me look at you or him. Um, I'd say let's look at each okay. other. Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah. I could do that. We're here with Janet Stevens from the Space Foundation. Hi, Janet. Hi. Hi. Can you tell us a little bit about the Space Foundation? Sure. We are a global advocacy organization for space. And we have a lot of different branches. We do a lot of different things. We do the National Space Symposium where we bring the space powers that be together. We, but we also have an office in Washington where we educate legislators about space and where we keep our corporate members informed about what's going on in Washington about space. Plus, we do broad space awareness programs designed to reach the general public so that they can understand the true value of space activity to their everyday lives. And then we have a very large education endeavor that is designed to encourage young people to study science, technology, engineering, and mathematics so that they can grow up to be the space workforce of the future. And can you tell me a little bit about your mission there? Our mission, well, our mission is pretty broad, to advance space-related endeavors to inspire, enable, and propel humanity. And I guess there's two parts to that. One is that we absolutely believe, above, far and above anything else that we do, that space is inspirational. Space activities make people better people. They make us smarter. They make us want to explore. And it's sort of in our DNA to do that kind of exploration. So that's the first thing, that we truly believe that space is one of the most inspirational things you can do. Our job is to advance it so that that doesn't get lost, so that we continue to explore and move forward and learn. And so you put those two things together and that's what we're all about. Now we know a lot of people are interested in careers in space. Can you tell us a little bit about the different types of careers? Well, there's a broad range. I mean, the first thing that you think of, well, actually the first thing people always think about is astronauts. And right. of course, that's a very small uh, audience. I mean, that's a very small group. You know, there's only been, you know, four or 500 people that have actually four been or 500. 500. Not too many. Not too many. That have, I mean, out of the real, of the whole world, that's a very small sampling. Mm -hmm. But that that is a career. But astronaut is not like a job itself. Astronauts are generally the same kind of people that work in space on the ground, which in, in many cases are people with advanced degrees in astronautics, uh, avionics, uh, electrical engineering, chemical engineering, etc. Now a lot of people that work in space are actually scientists that are studying a wide variety of things that might not even have anything to do with space. So biologists and chemists and things like that. And these are all really high level jobs, high paying jobs. But then there's a lot of other jobs in the space industry because it's an industry. It's a $300 billion industry. So you also have human resources professionals. You've got accountants. You've got people who build things in plants. So you've got machinists and you've got people who assemble circuitry and things like that. So really, a lot of the jobs that you'll find in any industry, you're going to find in the space business. The, the, the true space type jobs, one good thing about them is they're among the highest paying jobs in the nation. So in the state of Colorado, for example, the average aerospace job pays about $120,000 a year. That's about double the uh, average professional type job. So you can see it's a really lucrative career. It's a difficult um, career as well. I mean, you need a lot of education and it's not easy stuff. It's it's difficult stuff to do, but it's very rewarding for the people that are in it. Can, can you tell us um, where you see the next big advance happening in space? Well, I think, well, you know, we've been stuck in low Earth orbit for more than 40 years. So um, the next big advance, I think, one is going to get back out of low Earth orbit. To, to I mean, we've got, we've got exploration vehicles, we've got probes, we've got rovers that have gone out, but to get humans back out of low Earth orbit and either to the moon, to an asteroid, or even to Mars. So I think that that's the next big thing that's going to happen with human spaceflight. Um, what I'd like to think is the next big thing that's going to happen just in general is at some point we're going to find another planet that's got life on it. I mean, I think that's going to happen. I don't know when it's going to happen. We're looking for it right now. We're finding lots of planets. We're finding lots of planets with Earth-like characteristics. So I think that that's going to be the next big discovery. And, uh, and when you talk about life on another planet, because it's always a topic of interest and there's believers and non-believers, can you tell us um, what that life might be? Yeah, I can't. And I don't think we know. And you know, it's interesting because we say we're looking for life on another planet. And the way we look for life is we look for water. It's the first thing. But then we also know that there are some life forms that don't need water. So what I mean, it gets down to the question, you know, what is life? What constitutes life? But, you know, I think we could be looking for something as simple as, as microbes uh, to something, you know, to a planet that's inhabited by humans type 
creatures. You know, we really don't know. But it's, to me, difficult to imagine with what we know about this universe that we're the only planet with life like we have on it. And especially when you look at what Kepler is discovering, you know, thousands of planets, thousands and thousands of planets, many of them like Earth. There's got to be something similar to what we have here somewhere else. Now, the Foundation works with a tremendous amount of uh, current and former astronauts, is that yes, correct? Yes, we do. And um, what are their opinions on things like that? Yeah. Has anybody ever talked about that? I think astronauts in general, you know, they're people, so they have a lot of different opinions. But in, in general, most of the astronauts I've spoken to do believe there's probably life somewhere else. I mean, it's just, they're scientists. They look at the data in front of them. They say the universe is gi ginormous. There are all these planets with all these characteristics. If you were a scientist and you were looking at data, you would say, it makes sense. It, it makes less sense. It's more improbable that we're the only ones. Yeah. I mean, so, so I think that's what most astronauts would tell you. Most astronauts are scientific. Um, and um, but I can't speak for all of them because they're you know they're people and they all have different opinions and different views. Right, and the, the symposium brings together um, a, a wonderful mix of, of prime vendors, subcontractors, and so forth in the space industry. And I know that um, this is the primary event for the United States. And I know there's similar events in other countries. Is the Space Foundation um, talking about one international symposium at some point? Well, this is actually one international symposium. Okay. Uh, in fact, we're changing our name next year. We're going to be the Space Symposium. We're dropping the national because we haven't been national for a number of years. This is a very global event. We have people from close to 30 nations represented. 30 and nations. It, very it, impressive. it grows every year. We have, uh, if you look, if you walk around the exhibit hall, you will see uh, U.S. companies, you will see c companies from other nations, and you will see companies that are collaborations between U.S. and uh, international operations. And it really reflects what's going on in space. Space is a global endeavor. It's expensive, it's difficult, and it is also something that, um, like I said, it's a basic of the human spirit. It's not a national spirit as much as a human spirit. So it makes sense for us to collaborate. And, and I think you will see for example, the International Space Station is probably one of the example. best examples of international cooperation. I mean, who would have ever guessed that the two prime countries are Russia and the United States? And yet we work very well together on that space station. It's brought nations together because what we're doing there is science. And science is probably far less political than a lot of other things you could do. So I think that space has the ability to bring nations together and it and, and get us all encouraged in the same direction. So it's really good for, for bringing, when we work very closely, for example, with China, uh, we have representatives from China here and, um, you know, we have a lot of conflict with China uh, politically, but in the space business, it's far less so. And if people are interested in the Space Foundation, because it's clearly a wonderful organization, <laughs> If they're interested in finding out about it or supporting it, where would they go? They go to www.spacefoundation.org. Janet, thank you so thank much. Thank you.